Hello and welcome to the big picture. People of Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh have voted on predicted lines. While for the BJP and Narendra Modi, it's a matter of tremendous satisfaction to have performed a hat-trick. For the Congress, the clear victory in Himachal Pradesh should come as a great relief. However, the focus of this round of election was more on Gujarat for obvious reasons. While analysts are divided over the impact of Modi's victory, as he has just been able to retain the seats what he had won in 2007, the political discourse in the coming days is bound to centre around his move to the centre and his role in 2014. However, what cannot be lost sight of in all the euphoria around the results is that this was just a quarter-final for the 2014 elections. The semi-final is slated for 2013 when five key states, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh and Delhi will go to the polls. So this premature display of euphoria by the BJP may just be misplaced. However, for the Congress, it is no consolation as it is faced with many questions for which it has to find answers sooner rather than later. Today, we will discuss verdict 2012 and see what it means for both the Congress and the BJP. To discuss this, I have with me B.K. Hari Pesad, General Secretary, AICC. Sheshadri Chari will be joining us soon. Bharat Bhushan, Senior Journalist. And Venkatesh Ramakrishnan, Associate Editor, Frontline. And on the phone line from Baroda will be Gandhian activist, Professor J.S. Bandukwala. Welcome to all of you. First, let me go to Hari Prasad. Hari Prasad, where did the Congress strategy fail in, in uh, Gujarat? We'll come to Himachal Pradesh. There is some consolation for you in Himachal Pradesh, I know that. But let us first deal with Gujarat. Where, where all did your strategy in, in Gujarat fail? You were, you, were, you were a very active uh, person there. You, you stayed there. You were a general secretary in charge of Gujarat earlier also. So where did the uh, strategy fail? You had five years to plan your strategy, but still it seems to have gone wrong. First of all, uh, two states had gone to polls. Yes. Both were with BJP. Right. One has come back to Congress. One, we couldn't do it. The one which has come to us, it's not a consolation. Uh, people there, party workers and the leaders have fought for it and uh, they have got it. Gujarat is entirely a different state. <coughs> the geopolitic uh, of Gujarat cannot be compared with other parts of the country. Uh, for various reasons, I don't want to discuss all those things. And uh, what was the major issues which was raised in uh, Gujarat uh, elections uh, was something, you know, surprising. Congress was accused of uh, so many things in the past one and a half years, right from civil society to Ramdev Baba to anybody for that matter. But none of those issues were raised there. That, that is a consolation <coughs> for you. No, I'm, I will come to that. Because those were not the issues at all. Only to defame the Congress at the center, a lot of uh, hue and cry was raised. And uh, finally, they stuck to development uh, issue in Gujarat. Uh, I don't understand because veterans are here and uh, BJP is a well, a learned team is there. They should tell us when was Gujarat backward to say that they have developed it now. Go back to centuries. Hari Prasad. Always it has been no, in the we forefront. we are not talking, we're not, we'll come to <coughs> development later. I am talking, I am asking you, you admit that Congress has not been able to do better than what it did in 2007. It's not that why easy. Did they, where did your strategies go wrong? No, no strategy has gone you wrong. You didn't have a strategy? No, we had. Nowhere we, had, we have gone wrong. It's not an easy thing in Gujarat. You know, after 93 and after 2002, it takes little time to brief the whole, uh, to debrief the Gujarat. It's not that easy. To debrief the people of Gujarat? No, 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 no. The a political scenario. Okay. It takes time. We have to get into the minds of the people. It will take its own time. Okay. Um, Bharat, he obviously, you know, the Congress people, as when, it, when you, today, Gujarat is, a, is their Ashley's heel. It has always been that for the last 10 years now. 
So you can't expect them to come out in, and say exactly what has gone wrong. Though quite a bit seems to have gone wrong going by the going by the results. But do you see any hope for Congress in these results as far as Gujarat is concerned? But not in these results per se. But I think Mr. Hari Prasad is right that Gujarat is an exceptionally polarized society. <laughs> Now, to break that polarization will take time because mm. you have to change people's mindsets. You have to tell them what is in their short-term interest need not necessarily be in their long-term interest. And what the Congress will have to do is put together another coalition of uh, castes and communities. After all, Kham was destroyed by the Patel Rajput uh, Kohli Adivasi uh, coalition that was uh, first put up under Keshubhai Patel. And Mr. Modi is reaping the benefits of that uh, till today. So you'll have to do all that. But Having said that, I would still say that Narendra Modi had a much better uh, uh, electoral strategy. Uh, he, develop, he made development an issue. He was supplying electricity for eight hours in rural areas. There was abundance of electricity in, Some uh, in cities. Some people getting 24 hours. And, but Some people at, at, very high rates, get at very high rates, but people are willing to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, he solved the water problem, except in Saurashtra because of Narmada. He uh, brought in foreign investment, or at least showed people that I'm trying to get foreign investment. And investment from... Uh, corporates within India so that their kids will get jobs. Yet at the same time, he uh, uh, <coughs> kept track of caste politics. Right. He divided the Patels. He attracted the Rajputs. He fielded Kohli candidates. He attracted the Adivasis. And he made sure that in the urban middle class, there was no uh, 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 sort of anti-incumbency against him. There was no hatred uh, of uh, his rule. And then he got everybody, virtually forced the top leadership of BJP to endorse him as a candidate, a, a possible candidate. So to say that he's fit enough for PM uh, was a certificate he got uh, from uh, senior BJP leaders who may not like his uh, way of politics. He managed all this. So uh, you know, ele elections have to be managed. Yes. His electoral management was much better than that of the Congress. You know, uh, leave aside the other factors. Okay. Uh, Venkatesh, Bharat has Bharat uh, listed out the strategies which one the Modi strategies which, which helped him to come back for a third time. But, you know, what do you think were the failures of the Congress? Well, I'll also start with uh, what was the advantages of, of the BJP campaign, I mean, the, the Modi campaign. Uh, what Bharat has listed, uh, they're all re very relevant. But apart from that, I think the fundamental reason uh, behind Modi's victory is that... Uh, the 2002 consolidation of the Hindutva consolidation that happened in 2002, he has been able to maintain that in 2007 and also in 2012 right. uh, with a very, very interesting nuances. In 2007, he turned the Mautka Saudagar, uh, you know, epithet to, into in something which was, uh, he kind of branded it as a... Uh, Anti, a, in, it's, it's against the people of Gujarat. Gujarat. Yes. And this time also, if you, if you look at closely his campaign, Development was, was projected as a very important issue. But along with that, you had the Sartreik thing. You had uh, how the Pakistan was, you know, kind of barraged on that. And uh, uh, in Gujarat, in its peculiar socio-political climate, any attack on Pakistan also turns out to be an attack on the minorities of Gujarat. And on the Congress. On the Congress. <laughs> so, you know, on the Congress part, I suppose, uh, uh, consistently, I mean, since 2002, the Congress has failed to act as a responsible secular party. It has always uh, tried to adopt a soft Hindutva agenda. Uh, as uh, uh, Jais Bandhukwala told us when we were traveling, uh, Congress wants the Muslims to vote for the Congress, but it also tells the Muslim community, don't come too close to us. Keep a distance. Keep a distance. So this pursuit of the soft Hindutva agenda uh, I suppose, ultimately was to be counterproductive. And why, why, why would anybody vote for a... You think uh, that was the major failure of the Congress? I suppose that's the major failure of the Hari Congress. Hari Prasad, you think that was the major failure of the problem? You were, you were soft Hindutva. You all, you, you, the Congress also displayed. You were seen as a B team of the BJP. The, the minorities were not, were not too happy with you people. They felt that you have abandoned them. <coughs> okay, defeat you know, always is an orphan. That's fine. But uh, I don't uh, agree with what um, uh, Mr. Venkatesh says. We, are, we had very, we were very clearly we had mentioned in our manifesto, we had brought in that Sachar committee reports also. All the issues were, were reflected in, uh, in the manifesto. And the issues of minority, as far as Gujarat is concerned, it cannot be fought on the streets. The kind of, uh, as... Uh, 
said earlier, polarization is there in Gujarat. You can't fight it on the floor. You can't of the fight it on the street. Please, on the street. Yes. It has to be fought on the floor of the house. But Modi fought it. When he said uh, Ahmad Mia Patel will become the chief minister, he frightened the Gujarati he frightened the Gujarat. Hindus to, yes, uh, into imagining that a Muslim will become their chief absolutely. minister. Absolutely. You know, and, and that they don't want to, no, the no, Congress no, no, doesn't no. seem to, no, no, please, the, please, you don't please. want to accept the no, reality. No, no, just because of our political gains, we can't put the lives of so many a thousand lakhs of uh, Muslims uh, at stake. Okay, let me let, no, no, let, no, 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 let no, me let no. me for our political gains. If you talk of those things, immediately there will be a polarization. You can see another. You can expect another carnage there. We just wanted to avoid all those things. Whatever we 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 had assured, we had promised. It was it is there in the manifesto, and we spoke. You to expected that. The, you no, expected no, 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 no. Uh, you know. We, we are we are more responsible than than Bharatiya Janata Party. Okay. The Bharatiya Janata Party's political strategy, right from Jansang days, it was anti-reservation first. Then they know it could not be sustained for a long. Then it was slowly converted into communal one after after Babri Masjid. Then 2002, 2007, it was a sub-nationalism. Now they talk of uh, you you spoke of uh, this Sir Creek issue. It's not a Gujarat issue. It's a national issue. We it's don't compromise issue, on the right, whatever anyway, it is. But whatever it is, I let me get let me get the reaction from the ground zero as you know, so to say, because I have on the phone line Professor J S Bandukwala, one of the one of the most eminent Gandhian activists of Gujarat. Uh, Professor Bandukwala, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. I will respond to your uh, yes. points. Yes, but Professor Bandukwala, the the person who just spoke to spoke now before you, uh, I am speaking to you is. B.K. Hari Prasad, General Secretary of the, of the Congress Party. He says that, you know, they cannot fight, the, uh, they cannot fight Modi's brand of uh, politics on the, on the streets. They would rather fight it on the, in the assembly. You know, you, you think, where do, where do you think the Congress went wrong this time again? See, uh, we have to be very clear that Modi's uh, uh, found base, political base, in Gujarat is due to what happened in 2002. See, it's a mistake to say that his power comes from development. Mm. See, the number of reports have shown that in Gujarat, development is heavily tilted towards the upper and the rich people. Right. The poorer people have not, there is very little distributive uh, the economy over here. The poor have not really benefited much. But yet you find that the poor have voted strongly for Modi. Right. And that the only explanation is that Modi's image as a man who taught Muslims a lesson is the root cause of his success. And we can, uh, and this has to be borne in mind in analyzing Modi. Okay. That is why Modi did not give a ticket to any Muslim this time. Okay. 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 So, Professor Bandukwala, please stay on. I'll come back to you. I have, uh, on, I have uh, Mr. Sheshadri Chari, convener of the BJP Foreign Affairs cell, with us. Mr. Sheshadri Chari, you heard J.S. Bandukwala just now, and I hope, uh, I, I hope <clears> you were there when Hari, Hari Prasad was talking. The, the the victory the, the, the uh, hat trick for Modi is indeed impressive all all said and done, but Professor Bandukwala thinks that it is still the 2002 message which is still being carried and it was carried subtly this time also and it was the communal card which helped Modi come back to power and development is just a facade. I heard uh, the Congress spokesperson also. Yes. The fact is, if you if you keep on analyzing every election victory. Only from the communal point of view, you should also go back to what the Congress and other parties, including people like Mr. Bandukwala said mm. before the elections. They said there is no development, the development has been lopsided, only the cities have flourished, the villages have not flourished. No, no, he is saying that even today also. To Professor so, Bandukwala so now, said that today also. Now, after the election also, if you keep on saying it, people, you will, it is you who lose, try, you, you start losing credibility. The voters of Gujarat have said, have proved that it has been a proper development. All the figures that were rolled out have been proved wrong by the voters of Gujarat. It is not that the Modi or BJP has won only in Baroda and Ahmedabad. 
they have one in rural areas also they have one in kutch they have one in saurashtra they have one exact, in western gujarat mr, Ch mr. chari in all the states no no mr chari Therefore, mr chari what is what is important is see we the, let us let us analyze not let us analyze the victory and defeat both right somebody can say that you no, talk will, only will, on behalf of the bjp no, no, we will, talk about will, the congress no no we will come to the but, to, to your defeat himachal and himachal but, but the fact is, is the congress was fighting gujarat elections in a very laid back manner okay i mean uh, i'm sure uh, mr chari th that analysis we will we will uh, i will i will get others to do it i i, I want to ask you you know in fact mr bandukwala just now said that that even though it looks as if development as an issue has has won the gujarat vote uh, for for modi and the poor also seems to have voted even though they feel some of these mm. people feel that the, the the there has been no distributive justice in the mm. in, in distributive economic justice the only reason why the poor also have voted is because of the communal card played very uh, played by narendra modi you know in a very subtle manner this time mm. ahmad mia and all these issues so what do you have to say to that <clears throat> no what was the congress's reaction to all that did the congress ever come out with a reaction during the election was modi that's, talking only about I, this i think that's very smart of you and, on the part and, of mr H and and modi raised a number of issues modi raised a number of issues the congress went on and saying to the people of gujarat that there is no development mr chari Mr. Chari, I think I think that's a very smart. In fact, that is exactly what Narendra Modi was hoping that you know these people will react, or at least that's what Congress thinks, and that's why they seem to have been very cautious about it. No, anyway, but, but, but what do yes. you, what do we expect? What do we expect Narendra Modi to anyway, say? Well, no, no, what do you expect Chari. the BJP to say? Once, you no, want no, you want we you want BJP to want, read out Mr. Sonia Gandhi's speech? Well, let's move on a little bit. I want to get Bharat Bhushan in on this. Bharat, do you think that it was a pro incumbency vote? You know, we have we have actually this pro incumbency factor is working in India for the last few elections. We have seen it happening in other states also. People now seem to be voting for a. for a government which they perceive to have performed is this also another such case you know pro incumbency and anti incumbency are descriptive lab labels yes. they they don't carry any analysis after the event we say it's anti incumbency but th th there has to be a proper analysis of what happened yes and and that analysis will show you that yes he created the image of a man who was spearheading the development of the state I agree with Mr. Hari Prasad that the human development indicators of Gujarat are exceptionally poor. Right. Malnutrition, uh, lack of solid waste management villages, lack of uh, pipe drinking water, and so on and so forth. You can go on. Sex ratio. But, yeah, yeah. But he Sex created ratio. an image. So as you said, it's a question of perception. In the perception battle, he won on the development uh, issue. But the fact is, it's a deeply communally divided society. Right. And and Sheshadri Chari is right. what do you expect bjp to say it's a communal <laughs> party it will make communal arguments what the congress uh, did was very clever instead of uh, going into his court into his parlor and getting into a communal uh, uh, debate with him where the victory will always be of the majority uh, 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 consolidated uh, uh, communal electors they they refused to engage with that they did the right thing you think they did the right thing they did the right thing but uh, vantesh where gujarati is voting you know one is one is the pro incumbency factor which uh, bharat you know explain but i want you to look at whether you think the people of gujarat got sold to the idea of this 2014 and here is our pm candidate that is only one of the factors ha huh. but as i was saying earlier i would still believe that the primary factor is the consolidation of the hindutva voter which has been which has been made Which has, which has been concretized in 2002, and Modi has been able to maintain that consolidation. I mean, that is the that is the fundamental factor. Right. All these other factors have contributed: the factor of development or the perception of development, the factor that Modi would be pre projected as the prime minister candidate in 2014, uh, especially if he has got a better result than uh, 2007 elections. So all these factors have contributed. But if you ask me, what is the primary factor? i would say the continuance of the consolidation of the hindutva vote hindutva vote okay mr sheshadri chari mr sheshadri chari it is being said now that the that what has happened in gujarat is a victory for narendra modi and it is not a victory for bjp no it is a victory of bjp and narendra modi is our leader in gujarat just as shivraj singh chauhan is the leader in madhya pradesh dr raman singh is the leader in chatisgarh 
So you are everywhere. So, the chief minister is the leader of the right. party. So what about this hype about what about this hype about him being the prime ministerial candidate in 2014? You know the hype which has been created by your own party people. It is not the others. No, but but you yourself admitted saying that this hype was not created by the BJP or Narendra Modi did not mention that I am the 2014 no, no, but candidate. Narendra, but Narendra Modi alone others... never mentioned it. Narendra we Modi, never said it. But all... I am saying it on record, please. Yes. In your own show, television studio right now, I am saying we have not projected anybody as the prime ministerial candidate for 2014. And I am saying it now on it, record. No, no. And is, 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 will this hold good till 2014 elections? But 2014 is far off, as Mr. Chidambaram so said. I am so not you saying can. it. So I am repeating what the Finance Minister of India absolutely. said. Absolutely. So as of today, you have not projected anybody as a Prime Minister candidate. But in the in the next 16 months, you could you could very well do that. The party will start working towards 2014, and the Gujarat election has opened the doors for our victory during 2014 election. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we will we, let's let's go into a short break now. We need, uh, we will come back very soon. Please keep watching. Welcome back. We are discussing verdict 2012 and asking the question what it means to the Congress and the BJP. Bharat, coming back to you, going back to the Modi and what uh, um, Shehadri Chari said. Shehadri Chari says that here today on this program, I am declaring that BJP is not going to, has not projected anybody as a prime ministerial candidate. But then he doesn't have an answer to them. There are still 16 months left whether they will do it. If Do you think that this vote in Gujarat was partly, uh, <coughs> a, you know, uh, the result of this campaign that Modi, w w up to, uh, 2012 Modi for chief ministership, 2014 for prime ministership. That's been the campaign. Yes. And Modi's ambitions cannot be limited only to Gujarat, the, uh, yeah. uh, you know, even if he doesn't say so. Yes. I think his uh, third time victory will have uh, tremendous consequences for the BJP, for its allies and for several states. What will happen, first of all, is Nitin Gadkari will not get his second term. Mm. People will say that, you know, vacate this seat and anoint Modi. Because what is Modi's route to uh, Delhi or to becoming prime minister? Not sitting in Gujarat. Right. He has to be here. Right. So he has to become party president. Right. He might even uh, get additional halo around his head and say that, look, I, my work in Gujarat is over. Let some other karyakarta, some other worker become, uh, like Anandi Ben Patel, who's close to him, become the chief minister. Or, or then you, within, you may not know, you may hold dual responsibility. We don't know. But within the BJP, there will be two kind of confrontations. One confrontation will, will be with the RSS. RSS writ on BJP will weaken. It will become, uh, you know, it will either play second fiddle or will be irrelevant as in Gujarat. Then he will get into confrontation with all the moderate leaders. Because they are not going to suddenly say, to oblige him and say, okay, you know, we will keel over and die. Uh, they don't want to become his chair leaders. Uh, he will also polarize politics and you, uh, BJP will gain in states, communally sensitive states like uh, UP and Bihar, they will gain in Jammu. But in other states where you know, the areas, districts, towns, cities, which have had communal rights in the past, that kind of communal polarization will take place. It will not be comprehensive because of diversity of India, caste factor, the youth not being attracted to Modi and so on and so forth. As far as his allies are concerned, you know, uh, in Bihar, Nitish Kumar cannot say in NDA uh, uh, if Modi is the uh, president of uh, BJP. Mamta Banerjee's choices will be limited. Earlier, she was with the uh, NDA. Right. She will not be able to go. Similarly, Telugu Desham will have to Naveen decide Patnaik. where to go. Naveen Patnaik. AIA, DMK will have to decide what they're going to do. So there's going to be complete realignment of uh, uh, political leaders and political parties in the states. So the consequences of Modi emerging on the <laughs> national stage are going to be devastating. Devastating. Mr. Shehadri Chari? <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, Mr. Bharat Bhushan has uh, made a, a lot of comments. He has added a number of points. I don't, uh, I have not men, uh, noted down all those points. But uh, what he says uh, can be summarized as uh, a suggestion for uh, Mr. Narendra Modi. If uh, 
<coughs> if I could possibly arrange a meeting between Mr. Bharat Bhushan and Narendra Modi, he can I go and no suggest interest. all these things to uh, Mr. Narendra Modi. You can probably but arrange it on the Rajasabha <laughs> television. <laughs> I, I can do that. But I don't think we are, we are reading too much between the lines. I think uh, today Narendra Modi has won a very big election. It's a spectacular victory for Narendra Modi, a third time chief minister. Right. And he has bet all the uh, typical theories of incumbency and anti-incumbency and pro-incumbency and all those things. Only right. on the development plan, we should accept the uh, victory. And it, this also gives us a chance to look into our own uh, party affairs, not only in Gujarat, but also in Himachal Pradesh. We have a long way to go. And also at the but national level. I'm sure at the national suggest, level also. <clears throat> at the I'm national sure at the level national also. Yes. But to suggest that because Narendra Modi has won this election, now from, I mean, I mean he is ready with the ticket for Delhi tomorrow and he is boarding the plane at 6.55 a.m. I mean, it's, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, okay. Uh, Himachal Pradesh, Mr. Chari, yes. is, uh, is a disappointment or you think that this is part of the turnstile politics of Himachal Pradesh, so you are not too worried about it? Yeah, I think Himachal, there are two very important factors. Uh, one is the tra tradition that Himachal Pradesh has maintained, like in Kerala. Right. So they have been changing government every term. Right. So they have not, never given any government a second term. Right. So we expected this. But in spite of this, we tried to, we, we have put up a very good fight, I think. And getting, the, getting back the 26 seats was good. Okay, Hari, Himachal, consolation for the Congress. It's not or you think it is a bigger, it, it, you know, it, it, can you can you can can you say that the victory in Himachal Pradesh will 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 over overcome or overlook the Gujarat uh, defeat? It's not the Congress Party we, who, uh, which was saying that the Modi model will be adopted everywhere, wherever the BJP rules states there. Mr. Modi goes there and says that uh, the next elections the Modi model will be adopted. Why that model is not uh, accepted in uh, Himachal? Himachal? So you see some hope. For, for the no, Congress. No, no, no. My point is different. One, he, uh, Mr. Chari was saying that it's a tradition in, uh, he was comparing with uh, Kerala, that's fine. Uh, one term it is uh, BJP, the other term it is Congress, that is fine. But they were climbing, they had the uh, big claims that uh, Modi's model will, uh, you know, enthuse the voters. Mm. The two factors. One, people, though, during the elections, you, you remember that LPG hike yes. was there. We thought that it boom right. It may boom right. Right. Despite that, people have voted for UPA one and two, and the other point which contributed to defeat of BJP because most of the polls, uh, exit polls, opinion polls, surveys, everything, every poll said it is neck to neck. The other factor which contributed for the defeat of BJP is the campaign of Mr. Narendra Modi in Himachal. In Himachal, okay. The, the elections are over. There will be any number of analysis which will be go, going on in the next, in the coming days, weeks and months as we head towards 2014. But before 2014 is 2013 where five states will go to polls. That will also be worth watching and you know following what, what is going to happen there. Maybe some of this euphoria which we have seen in 2000, here today, for some political parties and disappointment for some political parties may, may rever get reversed in 2013. We'll keep, we'll keep a close watch on it. But as uh, all the political parties will have to take some lessons from these elections. And one of the major things which we didn't get to get discussed is how a third force in Gujarat has not been able to make any impact. Anyway, thanks to all my guests, Mr. Sheshadri Chari, BK Hari Prasad, Bharat Bhushan, and uh, uh, Venkatesh Ramkrishnan and Professor Bandukwala who had joined us on the phone line from Baroda. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow.